Before my volunteers turn into couch potatoes, they're having their alertness, memory, concentration and reaction times measured using a range of simple computer tests. Next, we're having a spot of lunch. To induce that wonderful, slothful Sunday afternoon feeling, we've come down to the local pub where we're about to fill our faces with a good, rich Sunday lunch. Errol, some potatoes for you. As with all good roast dinners, there were plenty of carbohydrates on offer. After lunch, I asked them all to laze around. Several soon fell asleep. During the spell of lethargy, Errol was tested for skin conductivity. Sean for heart rate, and Carol was wired up to an EEG to test changes in her brain activity. After two hours of pure idleness, my volunteers were roused for another round of reaction and alertness tests. How would they fare this time? Did you see any difference between their alertness in the morning and the afternoon? Well, with the alertness and the reaction time, we found that in the afternoon, basically, their results were much lower than they were in the morning. So, their overall performance was impaired by their bout of laziness. But why? What was going on inside their bodies? Well, we found, as expected, that brain activity was less in the afternoon. So was the heart rate and so was the GSR, which is the emotional arousal. So basically, the body was working at a much lower rate than it would have been doing if it wasn't being lazy. This diagram on the left shows the brain activity of somebody who was doing activities like we did this morning. And we can see the bright colours which shows that the brain is thinking much harder and is much more active. This diagram over on the right, this is the brain activity of somebody being lazy. The blues, the dark blues, actually show that there isn't too much activity going on in the brain. So, our brain and body literally go into power save mode when we slob about and it takes a while to shake that off. Why are we so much more slothful in the afternoon? Well, after a big meal, our digestive system needs more blood, and so a lot of the blood is directed towards that. In fact, digesting a large lunch is harder work than you might think. Our bodies require up to 300 calories to digest a big meal. That's the equivalent to spending nearly an hour sweating away on the treadmill. So to power the digestive system, blood is directed away from the muscles to the stomach and intestines. And this is one reason why we feel lethargic after our Sunday roast. Duncan also measured Mark's blood glucose levels during his bout of lethargy. Now, as our blood sugars increase, our blood glucose levels increase in our brain, it alters the orexin levels in our brains, and that actually makes us sleepy. Orexin is a hormone that promotes wakefulness but our body converts the carbohydrates from our lunch into glucose, which inhibits the erection's ability to keep us awake. So, after a large lunch, glucose levels rise, we feel sleepy, lose concentration, and lethargy sets in. So, don't feel guilty if you find yourself nodding off on a Sunday afternoon. It's really not your fault. Blame the roast. If you want to fight back against the sin of sloth, then you might consider having smaller meals more frequently bulked out with fibre. Alternatively, of course, you could just give in to it.